Hi guys, welcome to the last and final episode of my Brandenburg Let's Play. That's right, this is going to be the final episode. I have finally taken Augsburg. Feels good, man. And um, we are going to be able to form Germany after coring up Augsburg. So I should just go ahead and say right off the bat, a lot of people might think it's only 1804. Why is the series going to end here? And the reason is because what the rest of what can be done in this uh, series is pretty self-explanatory. Um, we do have some war exhaustion which is going down. But as we take over extension, it is just going to make this that much more nightmarish the scenario that we're fighting uh and the reality is we have so much money stockpiled and with a hundred ducats a month we can continue to build up defenses and really combat these rebels even though they uh, are persisting in just about every region the reality is uh we are able to let's have a look here. i wonder if i could just press this mercenary button once again for 40 additional mercenaries so laggy doing that my goodness the reality is that we are able to defend and uh, i've kind of proven that we're able to stay ahead of the curb uh, although we're going full circle and uh, rebels like the finish are coming the rate at which they're spawning it has kind of slowed down if that makes sense we're able to stay ahead of it and uh we should be able to pick up more and more mercenaries more and more units there should be no reason we should not be able to defend at a faster rate uh the reason i've got to sneeze oh man i had to sneeze for a moment there uh the reason that we may struggle or we have not been able to struggle is not because our nation is not capable of defending against these it's just that i've been uh, uh reckless or it's not that i've been reckless it's that i it has become too tedious to actually resolve the situation uh whilst well, you know what I mean, resolve the situation in a uh, efficient manner. Uh, and yeah, so in reality, guys, with this here, we could easily declare another war on France. We could declare on these uh, smaller nations that we don't have truce with. Um, we could integrate Germany and uh, perhaps even Austria by the end of the game when our truce comes up. Um... We could probably get France. Whether we can integrate Great Britain or not is yet to be seen. We would have to be lucky. We would have to be very lucky and our ruler pass away so that we get this five um, regent. Five. Because then we'd be gaining two a month. If we make good use of our estate, we're about uh, negative, what, 70? Um, and uh, yeah, we'll cancel more subjects as we go. But we'd have to be lucky, for sure, to integrate Great Britain. So it's pretty self-explanatory what would happen. And uh, I don't like the idea of allowing my nation to collapse to rebels. So this would be pretty much persisting throughout the entire end of the game. Until the end of the game. And uh, that's why I'm going to go ahead and call it a run. Once we have actually formed... Germany, which is coming up here this episode as we just uh, wait for Augsburg to to core up and we are at peace. Going to be forming Germany, so that for me is going to be satisfying. It's going to be, it's going to satisfy me to some extent because uh, it was my ambition from the very onset of the series to form Germany, obviously. And so with that being said, what the rest of the episode is going to be is me slowly playing uh, this game out in the manner that I have been for the last 30 seconds. Just trying to stay on top of things. But what I would, did want to do 
is kind of record a recap uh, of the entire series of my thoughts and um, yeah so let's get that started I wanted to say firstly that you know I made a promise that I would play the game out no matter how things went and I did it in a manner where I don't pre-record things I tried to simulate being live you know by uh, um, uploading regardless of what happens rather than pre-recording the entire game and only uploading it if it was a successful game and uh, with that being said I can tell you guys right now that if this was a single player game uh, I would have quit and uh, <clears throat> not that it would have been a rage quit, but I certainly would have quit. And I tell you when I would have quit, it was when we were attacked by France for the first time. So if you guys remember, we PU'd Sweden. And up until that point, I felt as though we were not particularly lucky throughout the game. We weren't having very much luck at all. However, my ruler was actually extremely good. My heir, who then became my ruler, was extremely good quality ruler. And uh, that felt fantastic to get such a good ruler. And then we managed to actually personal union Sweden, which the war in of itself was not... Um, it didn't feel that good or satisfying because it actually slowed down my... Uh, the rate that we could have been uh, doing other things, if that makes sense. So it's not the war itself that was uh, so great, but of course it was the union and the potential that we grabbed there felt fantastic. And at that stage, our ruler actually died. Our very good ruler actually died at a very young age. I think he was 22, if I remember correctly. But what I do remember is he was at a very young age. He passed away and uh, it was within about a month or a month or two of Sweden being stable. And by stable, I mean having positive relations with us. And uh, he actually passed away and we lost the union. And at that time, um, I knew full well that, uh, you know, we could truce break, whatever, even though Sweden already allied England, which was a nightmare. Um, I knew that we could, uh, we could truce break and we could win the war. But I knew at that time that the PU had officially become more of a uh, nuisance than if we were to just can continue, you know, with what was supposed to be the theme of the series. If you remember laughably in episode one, I uh, said we're going to try to have a very clean playthrough. That's going to be my focus. Look at us now. Um, that is where things really turned for the worst in my in regards to my admin points. Uh, some aggressive expansion, but just time, efficiency, economy, and manpower. Um, it all really uh, became... The PU scenario had become a nuisance. But it was through no fault of my own. It was very bad luck. And uh, at that stage, like I said, it had become more of a nuisance than uh, it should have been. But we were still doing okay until I was attacked by France. So if you guys remember, I think, because I'm going just off of my memory, uh, up until PU in Sweden, we actually had them as an ally. We actually had them as an ally, and I went for the truce break for uh, to gain the personal union. Sweden had already expanded once, as well as being free and independent. So when we went for the war against them, our diplomacy had actually weakened. Uh, but after securing the PU with him, he was already loyal with us. It was just that um, he he did not have liberty desire. It was just that he didn't have maximum he didn't have over positive relations. And at that point, having him as a subject, we were certainly looking fine against the French in a defensive war. But of course, as soon as he actually uh, became free and independent. All of a sudden, we were looking vulnerable to the French, and they capitalized and attacked me. 
And uh, that is not how this uh, series was supposed to go, you know. We're not supposed to be struggling, spending time when we're already weak on manpower, economy, admin points. We're not sp supposed to be fighting wars for our very survival. And uh, in a single player game, if I was just chilling, having some fun, I would have actually quit at that point. Not because it was the worst game ever or we were dead. As you could see, we successfully defended ourselves against the French. It's just that um, my ambitions of having the best game ever as Brandenburg had kind of uh, completely, they were only, it, it had only become a dream at that point. And I knew that uh, we would have to have some, truly have some extraordinary luck to compensate at that point for the way that things were going. But speaking of luck, if you remember the first, just a moment ago, I mentioned how I felt like we were very unlucky. An example of that is uh, the Burgundian succession. If you remember, it was part of my sort of mission statement to take the Burgundian succession for myself as emperor. And uh, I did declare the war. And I, as far as I could tell, it looked like it would be completely decisive. Um... As long as I didn't mess up anything militarily, as long as I played well, I felt like we could take a decisive victory over them until I realized that they had a six shock general. And he had other stats as well, you know, it wasn't just a six shock general. Uh, so the way that he actually obtained that general, I have no idea. Um, maybe an event or something i'm not even sure that ai gets events you know but i have no idea how within only 30 years or so he had a legendary general and uh, i didn't have any actual insight on that i wasn't able to spot it and uh, yeah so that was really extraordinarily unlucky but regardless we fought against his godlike general and, uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, shock is basically everything in the early game. Your general is almost exclusively, like, of course, uh, maneuver and so on is important as well. It helps. And siege. But basically a general's strength is determined by its shock, essentially, in the early game. And, uh, he had the best general imaginable. Um, yeah, so we fought a long, hard-fought victory against him. And, of course, the Burgundian succession didn't fire. It was coming right up into the point where I was about to quit. I was about to just take some land and call it a day because uh, of the uh, call for peace. And finally, it did actually go off after a brutal... It had become the point where, you know, we, we spent so long at war, a costly war, that uh, it was almost not worth it. And uh, of course it was, ultimately, but it was reaching that stage, you know, where it had become more costly than um, the ultimate gain that we obtained. So it was it was not not the perfect run in that sense, not not perfectly lucky, certainly. Uh, but it is what it is. And, uh, of course, we continue to have other, <laughs> you know, not not terrible luck. I would say our luck did pick up, for sure, because we truly had abysmal luck in the early game. Um, our luck did pick up, but we didn't have the, the kind of uh, luck to counterbalance. What I was hoping for is, is if we were to really have a good game, we were going to have to have some extraordinarily good luck. And uh, we actually didn't end up having um, extraordinarily good luck uh, towards the end of the game. And one example of that, of course, is our complete garbage Empress. I don't know. Oh, gosh, she's so bad. If we had a better ruler right now, and even this zero on our air, like, how pathetic. Wow. It's just about as bad as it could be. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to touch on a few other things. Some people criticized me piecing out the English um, for the personal union opportunity over him when our ruler was elderly. And I've got a few things to say about that. One thing is um, when you're behind, like this is what I just kind of prefixed, uh, when you're behind... Sometimes it is best to go for the sort of high-risk, high-reward play. 
uh, because you're already behind, right? So if you're going to have a tremendously good game, you're going to want to take a high risk, high reward, and uh, hopefully it will pay off so that therefore you're in good shape again, as opposed to doing the safe play where you're already behind and you know you're behind. So I was hoping that if we pieced out, even though our ruler was elderly, um, he wouldn't pass away and we would we'd get a little bit lucky, like two, three years when he was, I think it was about 58 or 60. Uh, but of course he did die immediately after taking the Union and uh, we lost the Union of Great Britain. Now at that stage, it was not too hard or too costly to just fight a second unification war with him. Um, but what I will say is, you know, let's be real, guys. Let's be really real. We were behind. We're not in the best shape. It was a hard war against Britain. Do you really think, honestly, I mean, be, be intelligent about this. Do you really think the, the, the move was to just sit at war with Great Britain? The call for peace was about to come up. Do you really think we should have just sat there? waiting for our ruler to die i mean knowing our luck but just in general i mean need like it's you have to, i would have had to be really lucky man i was hoping that our ruler would just pass away naturally while we we're at war but you have to admit we would have to be lucky to where he would die in in a timely fashion what is most likely to occur there is that we would um We'd wait and we'd wait and we'd wait and we're achieving nothing and we're suffering more attrition. Our economy is not doing as well as it otherwise could be. Um, we're getting some more war exhaustion than I would like. Uh, call for peace happens and then we're desperate. Very much like the Bogan in succession, right? Then we peace out in a desperate scenario. And then it's more likely that our ruler dies because now he's, you know, 64 instead of, you know, 62 or whatever age he was. No, definitely the way to play, in my opinion, was to peace out and just hope to get lucky for a year or so while you uh, max relations up to 200 and um, all the modifiers of forcing a union, etc. actually dissipate. But we were not lucky there either. And with that being said, you know, I remember talking about how we're going to forge our own luck. Um, a lot of people look at my games, they don't watch, or they, they see the summary video, and they say I'm lucky because of my personal unions. Uh, along that line of thinking, I just want to say that our personal union over Great Britain in general was incredibly clutch. If you remember, I had only a few months opportunity while we had a, a British uh, queen... I think that was the way, or he had a, a German queen. But I can tell you right now that 90 plus percent of this community, this game, would not have even been aware that they had an opportunity to PU Great Britain there. Um, I don't think that's uh, dishonest or anything like that. I would say that that's accurate. <clears throat> um, and that is what I mean when I use the term fishing for PUs, is constantly keeping your eye on things and jumping, even if you have a window of opportunity of only a couple months, jumping onto that. So a lot of people say I'm, I'm lucky because I tend to get, you know, at least one personal union, significant personal union per game. But, um, you know, what they don't see, they see the results, but they don't see you actually taking the personal union the opportunity that they full well may have missed a lot of people and then of course the repercussions uh, the truce breaking the hard fought victory that we actually fought over great britain uh, he had a superior navy if you remember and we you know he's got forts everywhere we were isolated to only a couple provinces um, nowhere to retreat to for example it was very uh, dire scenario but we did manage to pull it off um, so yeah, that's that's basically most of what I wanted to say about how <sighs> our regent dies, dude. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, I was going to say that's uh, most of what I, look at this game, dude. This game is such a joke. My goodness. Um, well, about half week, near halfway there.
to the progress of uh, coring up Ulsberg. Uh With that being said, all that being said, I wanted to talk about um, the ultimate mission statement. If you remember, I I wanted to play Brandenburg in a manner that we would uh, just take, we would barrel roll through more powerful nations than ourselves and uh, keep on expanding because I felt like in the early game that is the limitation to Brandenburg. And uh, with that being said, I feel like we did a really good job. I was, um, you know, speaking of bad luck, uh, there was a lot of scenarios where I couldn't believe my luck. I couldn't believe that somebody like uh, Novgrod, who was very small and weak, I remember an instance where he he was struggling to get allies and he had no allies and I could have declared war, but I was using it my time a little bit more uh, in a pragmatic kind of fashion where I... Um, you know, began integrating a vassal or something like that before I declare the war. And then within the month that I want to declare the war, Novgorod pulls like a ridiculous alliance with uh, Denmark or something like that. And Novgorod was like a one province minor or something. It was just, uh, the luck was insane. I remember Muscovy did the same thing. We fought wars, we broke alliances, Muscovy did the same thing. If you remember Denmark, we got on top of him until he was very small. Sweden was most of uh, Scandinavia. And then he pulled an alliance with France. Uh, it just went on and on and on. Uh, really, it felt like the game was really doing everything it could to prevent me from taking um, decisive victories against the more uh, objectively powerful nations. But I feel like we did a really good job myself, uh, despite having bad luck. Uh, and in that way, this game was really successful. I really was quite um, offensive and fighting... <coughs> Excuse me fighting offensive war after offensive war and and having victories almost exclusively um so i'm quite proud of myself for that that's not an easy thing to do you know to go into a war where you're thinking you know we could lose this um that's not my uh general that's not generally how i like to play the game i, I like to be a little bit more cautious and decisive um, but we did a lot of uh, risky, I suppose, offensive wars in the hopes that we could, it would all pay off in the end. And so I, I suppose I'm, I'm quite proud of myself because of that. As far as uh, talking about, I want this game to be a clean game. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? Um, we were doing well initially. And uh, this game has just become so bizarre. It's, it's really something else, uh, even now. And uh, yeah, that's the other thing that I wanted to address in terms of the mission statement. If you remember, I talked about in the, the prelude episode, which I feel like I may as well not have, because I can't tell if I'm just being trolled or not, but people ask every episode of my Am I going to form Germany? Am I going to form Prussia? Why don't I just unite the empire? Why don't, and so on and so forth. Um, it was my mission to actually uh, integrate the empire. If you guys remember, integrate the empire. I thought that that's what I said. And the reason, part of the reason I made the pre, uh, prelude episode was to see your guys' thoughts was to see if somebody would say, hey, this is really stupid for this or that reason. You know, the reason this has never been done before is for this or this reason. Um, because sometimes, you know, there's only so much I can kind of, uh, in terms of the uh, theory crafting, there's only so much I can do myself, if that makes sense. Like, it was just an idea, and I wanted to kind of uh, spitball with you guys who uh, watch my videos to see if there was a, a real underlying flaw with the the tactic. I mean, obviously, uniting the HRE is just so much better in every manner and every way, but it's the complete opposite of forming Germany, right? I thought to myself, can we play a game where we are G Brandenburg into Prussia and, if, and we play as the emperor and integrate the empire with our Diplo points? And, uh, yeah, as we can see, there are definitely issues to doing this. In hindsight here, um, like I said, 
uh, they did cost Diplo points slots once we're no longer the Empress, so that is something I predicted. I could have completely ruined this game, guys. I almost did this, like, what, like 50 years earlier? And this game would have been done. It would have been an epic fail. Um, whereas now, it's, you know, ridiculously bad, but we are, uh, it would be recoverable if we had infinite time available to us, you know? Um, it's not a complete fail. Uh, but in hindsight, I should have cancelled my, uh, relations, many of them, if I had known how it would play out, while we had prestige, we had almost 100 prestige before I flipped to Protestantism. Um, that would have been the way to go, and we'd be in much better shape there than we are now. Um, we also could have cancelled Austria, and therefore we don't have to do the attack own vassal kind of thing with him. Um, yeah, but there, there's just issues with it. As you can see, what I didn't anticipate, which I wish I did anticipate, which I didn't, was of course the additional animosity you get from integrating a subject of the empire. That's what I didn't uh, anticipate. I just uh, didn't uh, consider it, and um, I wish that I had, because we could have we could have uh, played it out uh, differently. You know, although it's something that's kind of uh, unavoidable in a way. Um, we could have done our best to manage it, is what I'm trying to say. The fact that, um, we, I mean, pretty much I did my best to just integrate nations and improve relations, and still they were pissed off, right? But what I'm trying to say is, like, we should have integrated the larger nations exclusively and um, just embraced the fact that, you know, like, if we did this again, we would embrace the fact that being the emperor, emperor is a good way to go because you don't have to deal with the empire and there are certainly benefits to be had with the vassal swarm and so on. But we should have exclusively integrated the larger nations and then embraced the fact that we would cancel when we had an abundance of prestige subjects and then just annex them. You know, this one province mine is like they're nothing. If we could do this again, you know, from a certain point, we could be way more efficient, and it would be a much more efficient spot than we are now. Um, we'd be in a much better spot, is what I'm trying to say. But, you know, I just didn't have the foresight. This is such a hectic, uh, complicated game, and I didn't have the foresight to be uh, completely aware of how things would play out. It's pretty uh, crazy. Um, so I just want to say that, but ultimately, with all that being said, despite all the fails, despite the fact that we don't, we have not unified Europe, um, you guys gotta admit, like, it's a pretty good game, it's a pretty good game, we have massive influence, and of course, if we were able to integrate Great Britain, which I, I don't think we will, we wouldn't be able to, I don't think... Of course, we'd get his colonies and so on. But this is a pretty good game for Brandenburg, despite the lack of uh, productivity here uh, in in the end. These guys are about to be successful. i got to pull the stack over here to fight them. Uh, pr pretty good, if I do say so myself. Like, uh, it could have been so much better. We potentially could have... Uh, done a lot better for sure for sure if we could replay things and if we had better luck to say the least you know that that having terrible luck in the early game is just so painful i would rather have good luck in the early game and uh, have bad luck in the late game than the other way around if that makes sense because you can just be so much more productive in the late game if you've got a good game set up. Like, for instance, the fact that we had to PU Great Britain twice was just... The damage that it did was uncomparable to having to PU Sweden twice when it was, like, 1510 or whenever we did that. That was... The damage was just insane. It set us back so far. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys... I hope I did you guys proud... And I hope those of you who want this series to continue or something are uh, understanding, like, this is all the, the next four or five episodes would be, is just this kind of tedium. And, um, instead, 
I finally am going to hit the, the goal, the ambition that we had, which is to form Germany. And uh, I'm going to call it a day. One other thing that I want to mention is that another sort of negative aspect is, of course, that the Mandate of Heaven came out. And I didn't want this Let's Play to become like the only thing on my channel. And it mostly has been. I actually, unfortunately, it's my own fault. It's nobody's fault but my own. But uh, this, look how well we're doing against the rivals, by the way. We're actually cleaning up the rivals really nicely, to be honest. It's um, it's just the Diplos situation, which is really bad. Um, yeah, the fact that the new patch came out was really unfortunate. Uh, because this has basically become my channel. And uh, it's giving me extra incentive to, to call it here, guys, rather than actually play it out and suffer these last few episodes. Because uh, I have some ideas, some videos that I could be working on, which I, I basically have to finish this so I can delete my old version of the game so that um, my game is no longer quote-unquote modded. And uh, this, has, this series has actually been a, a detriment to my channel, in my opinion. Like, the kind of, the, the growth, the momentum I was doing from uh, getting... Uh, many more views than my uh, followers, my subscribers. Those videos were pulling in a lot of people. And uh, whereas this is the other way around, the uh, these episodes tend to not get as many views as I even have subs. Does that make sense? I'm um, just being completely real with you guys, like and open and honest, uh, so you guys see where I'm coming from. Like, I do want to uh, make another series for sure. Like, I would love to do kind of daily uploads, which I know will not get the same kind of view, which while I'm also wor working on uh, more grand videos and, uh, you know, tips and tricks and tutorials and uh, sort of showing off the ultimate results of my series and, and all sorts of things. Maybe even more funny, meme -y kind of stuff. But... I don't want it to be exclusively, like, a Let's Play, and I've got to make sure I don't have that happen again. You know, I should try to begin a series, um, or two, or whatever, when the new patch is released, and not after. <laughs> so, guys, we can finally form the German nation. And that is exactly what we all do. Which gives us 25 prestige, OP, OP. Oh my goodness, guys, we got prestige. Can you believe it? We're the best. We're at least the best. Let's cancel a dude. Get kickity cancelled. So good. Only losing two Diplo a month. Whole nother level. Wow, look at that. <clears throat> In the end, the land of many gurs. Pretty good. Pretty decent. Uh, it's a shame, you know, we should, we could so easily fight, um, a war or two like this, and, uh, really expand the, uh, or pr prettify our country, let's put it that way, but that's where I'm gonna leave you guys, um, I, I did enjoy it overall, you know, th this episode, hopefully it didn't seem too negative, that's not what I intended, I did really enjoy this, it was a lot of fun, and you guys gotta give it up, Part of my mission statement in the very prelude of this episode was to play Brandenburg, at, but to have a different run, you know, that, that was not the same as everybody else. And pl as playing Brandenburg into Prussia, into Germany, is one of the most overdone and kind of generic things to do, I think this is just about as different as it could possibly have been, really. You know, considering we're not doing tag flips and things like that. So, in that sense, this game was a huge success. Um, I just want to thank those of you who, who do watch. And I hope you do enjoy. Uh, thank you very much for, for sticking by. You guys are my peeps. And uh, we're going to be moving on to bigger and better things. Awesome. We have... It can be... Sure, surely, surely, even though... This was not the perfect game. We have uh, successfully paved the way for the men of many girls for a bright future and uh, perhaps even Europa at large.
Good job, guys. We can all pat ourselves on the back. I uh, really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time in another video or another series. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.